breaking the wall of superbugs with soil. Zainab Khalil, Soils for Science, Australia. Today I will share with everyone a sad story, but this story changed my life. A story of a man who I don't know, and he doesn't know me, but he completely changed my life. I saw him 20 years ago when I was waiting for my dad, who used to be a surgeon working in a hospital to finish his day work. I saw an old man admitted to the hospital. He can barely walk, can barely breathe, holding his daughter's hand. He sat on the sofa, waiting for the nurses to finish his paperwork. Tears streamed down his cheeks, mingled with kisses from his daughter, still holding her hand. Suddenly, his chest stopped, and he closed his eyes. This patient passed away from sepsis, a bacteria that infects the blood, a bacteria that was resistant to every single antibiotic in the market, a bacteria that can be present in this room among us, and not only among us, but inside us, and will be responsible for the next pandemic. This story changed my life, and I decided that I would like to study how these bacteria become resistant to antibiotics and what I can do to discover and develop the next generation of life-saving medicines. WHO stated early in 2023 that we need to discover new antibiotics and add them into the drug discovery pipeline. Otherwise, we will reach 10 million deaths by 2050, which is equivalent to one person every three seconds. Did this bacteria only affect humans? No. It affected animals, pets, many livestock, as well as crops. If you look around you, you may notice that most of the antibiotics in the market, such as penicillin or vancomycin, were initially isolated from beneficial microbes that can be present in the soil. So we decided that we need to study the soil microbes more in depth. And the best way to do that is to engage with the public closely, work together hand in hand to discover the next generation of new antibiotics. This is how Soil for Science was born. Soil for Science is the first Australian citizen science project to engage with the public to discover the next generation of antibiotics from soil microbes. To do that, we have designed a website where the public can order a kit. They can order either a small, medium, or large kit. We have also designed a kit, and the kit comes in your mailbox, consists of a spade, a brochure telling the people how to collect the soil sample, barcoded soil collection bags, a prepaid satchel. So what the public do is that they collect the soil, they put the soil in the soil collection bag, and then they mail it back to us in the provided prepaid satchel, or for free. We have also designed an app, which is Soil for Science app, and this is where we request the public to register the soil sample in the app and take a picture for the soil at the collection site. This will help us to define the environment from where it was collected and determine whether it's rural or urban. We have also designed an online photo gallery platform where the public can go and see all the images that we have created from the soil samples and from the microbes that we can identify. Through Soil for Science, we engage with everyone in the community. Through Soil for Science, we engage with everyone in the community. We work with homeowners, farmers, pastorates, schools, institutes, universities, childcare centers, aged care centers, researcher in academia, industry, and many more. 
we feel very happy when we receive the soil sample in the lab and we can see a small notes from children saying, thank you soil for science team for saving our lives. We also receive emails from school teachers acknowledging the impact of the photo gallery as it gives them an opportunity to open a classroom discussion <coughs> for biology students so they can discuss microbial um, interaction. We also feel very pleased when we have received inquiries from researchers in Canada and UK who would like to do soil for science project in their own country and we are currently helping them. Okay, imagine with me that this is a dark sky. When NASA left the telescope shutter open, this is what we saw, galaxies. In fact, the sky was not empty, but NASA gave us a glimpse to see the universe around us. This is a terrific analogy for soil. Therefore, with a handful of soil, you may see mud or earth, but we see a universe full of potential, a beacon of hope to break the wall of resistant bacteria and save the planet from the silent next pandemic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. questions. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Let's say you strike gold. You find an antibiotic from the samples that you get. This is a billion dollar opportunity for big pharma. What are you going to do? Are you going to give this to every single country so that they can produce it or are you going to make someone a billionaire? <laughs> I wish I can. <laughs> Actually, we have um, this discussion because we actually found a drug, and this drug was, um, is active against mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is the main cause of tuberculosis. Um, but it's not that easy, and it's very hard to convince the pharmaceutical industry to support us, by the way, because they ask us to do tons and tons of experiments. So we are dealing with Pfizer, for example, and once we have proven that, that the compound is really active and we convince Pfizer to support us, then we have to give them the drug. I mean, they can be in Australia, they can be in Berlin, they can be in Canada, they can be anywhere, but we will have to have a pharmaceutical company on board to support us to develop the drugs because it must follow the human ethics as well. So I have a question about, I understand the science and the data collection process. I'm, uh, the question is around engagement. Can you talk more about how you're engaging uh, your participants and the public in this conversation and the science communication piece of it? Okay, through engagement, we do too many things. Number one, we visit schools, especially primary schools, and we talk to the students. First of all, we give them some activities for them to try and see how we discover microbes from the soil, but it has to be safe. So we give them like breakfast cereals, mashed, and they are brown in color, which resemble the soil, and we put some jelly beans for them so they can use a tweezer to pick up the microbes, which are jelly beans. We also um, uh, um, provide virtual uh, meetings and uh, interviews and uh, tours for uh, students in rural areas. And uh, in terms of engagement as well, and the, this is very important, we had a teacher in residence um, with us for the last semester. She has used the content that we have generated from Soil for Science to create a curriculum based on the Australian educational guidelines. And we are currently trialing this curriculum with um, year six um, students. And we provided them with something that we called it Socks for Science. And this is where they bury the socks in the playground and they extract it after one semester just to see what did microbes do to the socks. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm, you, you're working in Australia and I'm conscious uh, about sort of land right issues and things. Um, and so I just want to hear a bit more about how you're engaging indigenous communities and what their response is to this. That's a very good question. Basically, the indigenous communities that was, uh, who are the First Nations, um, basically, they are very supportive of us as well. So we had a um, partner, which is Yama Banku, um, Aprojanal Heritage, which is one of the biggest Aprojanal community who becomes partner with the Soil for Science team. And they provided us with 200 soil samples from their land. And we are sharing all the IP with them, if we have any, which I believe we are still at the very early stage. Thank you. Thank you.